Howdy. The purpose of this video is to introduce and discuss the 10 plane point groups. And so we're going to give away the answer ahead of time. Here they are. There are 10 of them. Remember, a point group is a group of symmetry operations that, des that describes the symmetry around a specific point. And I'm calling these plane point groups because we're only interested in patterns in two dimensions at the moment. And so <clears throat> any specific point on a two-dimensional plane, I can look at the symmetry of the environment surrounding it, and I can describe that symmetry by one of these 10 plane point groups. So these are different um, from space point groups, or sometimes we're just even generally called point groups because these operate in three dimensions. Here we only have to worry about um, the pattern that's being repeated uh, exists in the two-dimensional plane. Okay, so how do we get these plane point groups? Really, we think about combinations of rotation and reflection elements. And we already discussed in a previous video um, that there are only five rotation axes which are allowable in two dimensions in plane, uh, in plane point groups. Uh, and all of these rotation axes um, are perpendicular to the plane. And so, for example, if I have a three-dimensional rotation axis, some point here is rotated 120 degrees over here, 120 degrees over here, and then back onto itself. So the first uh, five of the plane point groups are just those allowable rotation axes. So C1, remember, is... Uh, uh, is is a rotation axis that describes a two pi rotation. So that's really rotating an object back onto itself. So it's sometimes referred to as a trivial a trivial symmetry operation. We also have C2, C3, C4, C6. We can also think about um, how these rotation axes interact with mirror planes. And to do that, um, we need to uh, go into one really quick but important um, theorem, which is uh, relating what happens when we combine mirror planes and rotation axes. So to do this, we're going to think about um, some rotation axis here. I'll call it A alpha. And it's lying at the intersection of two mirror planes. Now, if I have a general object, uh, let's say it's located here, then that gets reflected across the first mirror plane. I'll call this M1. This will be M2. Sorry, M2. Um, so this general object gets reflected across M1 to a position here. And then it gets reflected across um, M2 to a position over here. Um, so now let's define some angles in this case. So we're going to call the angle uh, between M1 and M2, uh, we'll refer to that as mu. Uh, and then let's think about uh, this first mirror plane operation. So this is theta, but because these are similar triangles, this triangle here and this triangle here, this is also going to be theta. Uh, and then this is uh, another angle. It doesn't have to be the same. So we'll call this one uh, phi. And this is also angle phi. So you can see from my drawing, <laughs> hopefully, mu equals theta plus phi. Right? So this interior angle and this interior angle combine to make mu. Um, so if I look at the angle bef between this original position, let's say 1, 2, 3, the angle between 1 and 3, that's 2 theta plus 2 phi, or that equals 2 mu. So um, the final part of this is that realize that when we reflect once, we go from right-handed to left-handed, and when we reflect again, we go back to right-handed. So what this is telling us is that a rotation um, around some rotation axis, uh, it, uh, let's say this a different way. 
So reflection across M1 and M2, where M1 and M2 are intersecting mirror planes, is equivalent to a rotation around some angle, right? Um, and if we get more specific, we can say uh, combination of mirror plane one and mirror plane two uh, that are an angle of mu apart is equal to rotation of an angle to mu, right? Or uh, equivalently, since we usually think about these rotation al angles as having a very specific um, angle of rotation, we can write this uh, reflection across mirror plane one and mirror plane two that are uh, alpha over two uh, radians apart is equal to a rotation angle of A sub alpha. And what this is telling us is that um, uh, for any rotation angle alpha, uh, if I have one mirror plane through it, I have another mirror plane that's located at uh, rotation angle alpha over two, or half of the rotation angle here. And so I can rewrite this a different way um, that explicitly says just that. A rotation axis uh, that rotates through an angle alpha uh, combined with some mirror plane gives me another mirror plane uh, at an angle alpha over two from the first mirror plane. Um, so how does this operate? If we, let's, let's use the twofold and mirror plane as an example. So if I have a twofold rotation uh, axis and I have a mirror plane through here, remember uh, this is a sub pi, right? A twofold rotation axis rotates some general object, let's say a dot up here, by pi radians to over here. Um, so what the theorem tells us is that the twofold rotation, a sub pi, combined with some mirror plane, so we'll call this first one m2, gives us a new mirror plane at uh, half of that rotation angle, or pi over two. And so I'm gonna call this m sub one. Here we have m sub two and m sub one. So we can also uh, kind of convince ourselves of this um, graphically if we think about rotating around that twofold uh, rotation axis and reflecting across the original mirror plane and then I would reflect this across the original mirror plane, I can already see here that that combination of operations, that rotation in that original mirror plane, gives rise to a new mirror plane that's oriented perpendicular to that first one. Um, so this theorem is basically just explicitly telling you where you need to look. Um, so if we go back then to the plane point groups, um, again, the first row are just rotation axes. The second row is what happens when I interact a single rotation axis with, uh, I'm sorry, a single mirror plane with that rotation axis. So if we combine a uh, one fold rotation, which is two pi uh, degrees rotation with a mirror plane, then I find another mirror plane at alpha over two of that, or pi degrees rotated. So I rotate pi degrees, I find another mirror plane, but that's mapping on top of the original mirror plane. So the net result is that I have a single mirror plane which passes through my one-fold rotation axis. Um, and that's given by this particular uh, planar point group. If I do the two-fold rotation axis, that's the example we already worked through. So we cannot have a two-fold rotation axis with a single mirror plane passing through it. That's an impossibility because uh, anytime that mirror plane passes through the two-fold rotation axis, the other mirror plane is implied. It's impossible to get away from it. Um, so we can apply this to a three-fold rotation uh, axis as well. So I have my three-fold rotation axis. If we have a mirror plane that's passing through that, um, I find another mirror plane at uh, alpha over two. So um, a three-fold rotation would usually be three pi over two. 
Um, and so this is telling me that I have a mirror plane located at uh, 3 pi. I'm sorry, <laughs> two, the three-fold rotation is 2 pi over 3, and so I would have a mirror plane located at pi over 3, another mirror plane located at pi over 3, another one at pi over 3, and this is mapping back on top of the first one, another one at pi over 3, mapping on top of the second one, and on top of the third one. So the net result is that actually in this case, all of these new mirror planes which are introduced are mapping on top of existing mirror planes. And so you'll see in some cases, for the twofold, we have what are called interleaved mirror planes. So um, there's a, a mirror plane, and if I, if I do a twofold rotation axis, which is pi degrees of rotation, I have another mirror plane halfway in between. In other cases, uh, so for example, the, the 3M group, uh, I, I do not have that to be the case. Um, that is, the mirror planes are equal to the rotation angle. If I look ahead at a fourfold and a sixfold, um, I have these new sets of mirror planes that are interleaved. Uh, and we're going to talk about notation in a second, but that's why we have either MM groups or single M, because in the 3M case, those mirror planes map back on top of existing mirror planes. So I can repeat this again uh, for the fourfold and sixfold cases. Uh, in, in each case, I'm going to start off with my rotation axis. I'm going to have a mirror plane. Um, I could operate on that mirror plane by the rotation axis ahead of time. So a fourfold will, will give me already two intersecting mirror planes, um, but that's all. So, but when I, when I apply the theorem here, I see that a rotation of pi over two combined with a mirror plane gives me a new mirror plane at pi over four and that would uh, lead to another mirror plane here as well. Um, so again, the important conclusion here is that when I combine rotation axes and reflection or mirror planes in two dimensions, um, they can only combine in specific ways. That is, um, introducing a rotation axis with an angle of alpha, or A with an angle of alpha, and seeing how that intersects a mirror plane, it's gonna generate new mirror planes at half of that angle. So before we sign out, maybe one quick word on notation. Um, so there are two different notations that are listed here. The upper notation uh, is the Herman McGinn notation, and these are what are used in the international um, uh, crystallographic tables. Uh, the lower notation is called the Schoenflies notation. This is more uh, common among chemists and people um, who think about uh, point groups, but maybe not as much about translational symmetry. Um, so uh, the Herman McGinn, um, the number denotes uh, the uh, n-fold rotation axis. So this is a one-fold rotation, two-fold rotation, three, four, six. Um, and m refers to mirror plane. And again, 2mm means I have an interleaved mirror plane whereas 3M means that, that there is not an uh, interleaved mirror plane. 4MM, 6MM, these are all interleaved. The Schoenflies notation, C, refers to a cyclic point group, so that comes from the fact that we have a single rotation axis, and then the subscript is, again, denoting the uh, n-fold uh, rotation axis, so C sub 6 is the same as a six-fold rotation. Um, C sub S, this is coming from its origins, which is uh, German, and S means Spiegel or mirror in German. So C sub S is the notation for a single mirror plane. Um, and the, the denotion here is that I'm combining a two-fold rotation axis with a vertical mirror plane, um, or a mirror plane that is um, the rotation axis lies in the mirror plane. So C2V, C3V, C4V, C6V. All of these are rotation axes with a mirror plane that lies in, uh, that has that rotation axis lying in it. Um, okay, that's all. Thanks a lot.